Hi, welcome back to Resale Brothers. Um, I... Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. Just working on my short game. You need a lot of work. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to run through what we're going to do in this video. Uh, we're going to start with a what sold. It's going to be me telling you guys what sold over this past week. And then we're going to go into a little bit of a shipping video. Um, just uh, how our process is with shipping, how long it takes, uh, how we get 172 orders out in one day. And it's not all 172. It's, it's about, what, like a, a it, minute clip or something? It's only, like that. Yeah, it's like a two-minute clip, so... Uh, yeah. Don't worry if you see it and think, oh god, I gotta wait through this whole thing. Uh, we know, we realize shipping's not super uh, entertaining. Anyway, we realize shipping's not entertaining, so we move on from that, and then we go from the shipping video to a quick numbers run with Tony. He's gonna tell you the actual profit numbers, and he's gonna run through that real quick. Only a couple minutes, but it will show you exactly how much money we're making with all of our costs, all of our expenses. So we're gonna go from what sold to shipping, the numbers, um, we're gonna jump into it. I don't even know why I was in this intro because I didn't talk. He just went to golf. Other than working on my short game. All right, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna go over through uh, this past week's sales. Uh, that is uh, February 12th through the 18th. Uh, our total weekend sales, uh, this is not including President's Day, so this is just from uh, Friday to Sunday, was uh, $5,334. Uh, that's with eBay at $44.49, Mercari at $3.47, and Poshmark at a whopping $5.38. Uh, Poshmark sales down a little bit, uh, but Mercari was up a little bit, so that's okay. Um, for the total week, so the 12th to the 18th, it was $13,000.71 for our gross sales. Uh, eBay was a little over $10,000, Mercari was $5.19, and Poshmark was around $25.44. Um, these are just some numbers that you guys can look at. We'll go in more depth on these numbers uh, in another video, breaking down uh, profit, not just uh, gross sales. But for now, on this video, we're just going to go over the gross sales. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with some of the stuff that sold on Poshmark first. Um, this item here is a G4 uh, men's golf polo. And now G4 is a great brand to look out for. If you've never seen it before, it's got a G slash 4. Um, really, really good golf brand. If you see this brand, almost always pick it up. It's actually good. So this has a skull on it. That makes it even better. Um, skull is a great keyword to add. And there was a flaw on it. So there's a little snag on the armpit. Not on the armpit. On the Well, I guess it is on the armpit. Uh, on the armpit, which obviously is going to deter from the value a little bit. But it's still sold for, I believe, like $40. So a decent sale there. Uh, next, we have a pair of men's Sorel. Uh, sneakers uh, got these for five bucks sold pretty quickly for 45 um, great brand to be on the lookout for in men's and women's shoes um, always look them up there's a really big uh, gap sometimes they're worth like 30 bucks sometimes they're worth like 130 so um, it's definitely model specific but uh, Sorel is a great brand to look out for and this video is gonna be it's gonna be a quick video rapid fire so if I go too fast uh, slow the video down I guess but um, we just want to get a quick uh, what sold video out so you guys can see kind of what we're selling uh, now in 2024 in the month of February, getting into late February. So uh, this is kind of a weird time of year in between seasons, but we are still selling at a decent pace. So these are a pair of men's Clark's Oxfords. Um, I actually think they have a very unique look to them. Uh, when I saw them in the store, I was like, oh, these are weird for a pair of Clark's. Don't normally buy Clark's. Um, just seems like the brand's not the greatest. I mean, every once in a while I'll pick it up if it's a newer uh, or in like kind of a weird style. I'll pick it up like this, for example, was a weird style. Took a while to sell, maybe three, four months to sell, but sold for $114 uh, plus shipping. So uh, great price to sell. I think we paid like 10 bucks for these. So definitely not going to complain. Uh, be on the lookout for a men's Oxford uh, wingtip Crocs. These are kind of a rare style. So um, always check it. Do a Google Lens and... Uh, Give it a search on eBay. Um, here is a Oros jacket. Um, I am not super familiar with this brand, but um, it did sell really quickly for $40. So um, my brother actually bought this. So if he was here, he could elaborate a little more. But um, I guess Oros is a good brand to look out for. It looks, it's got to be made out of something weird, right? Nope, just polyester. Okay. Well, Oros, uh, I think it's a men's, right? Yeah. Um, men's jacket. Be on the lookout for Oros. Uh, next is a pair of equestrian women's pants. Uh, the brand is Free Ride. So let's see if I can find the actual. Well, I don't see the. Let's see. 
yeah, the brand is a free ride equestrian. Any type of equestrian pant, it's going to be good. Um, a lot of times they'll have padding or like little leather patches on them. Uh, so if you see anything equestrian related, look it up. It's probably going to be a pickup. Next, we have a pair of Red Wing boots. Uh, these boots sold for uh, $94. Um, this was actually with free shipping. Our Macari account has free shipping, so um, had to pay shipping on this, but we paid like 15 bucks for these, and they sold for $94, a decent little profit there. And boots are still selling this time of year. Uh, would I pick them up as aggressively as I would a couple of months ago? Probably not, but boots are still selling. They normally sell pretty much year-round, especially Red Wing, great ba uh, brand to be able to look out for. And most people are probably familiar with Red Wing, but um, if not, that's what it looks like. <laughs> okay, next over here to eBay, uh, we have a vintage uh, C.C. Filson Cruiser uh, wool shirt, kind of like a shacket type deal. Uh, this was made in the USA, made in Seattle, Washington. Um, Filson, obviously a great brand. Uh, most of our top sales are actually Filson. So if you see Filson, pick it up. Uh, they have Filson groups and stuff you can join as well. Um, this was listed this is in the 40000 so this sold relatively quickly as well. Um, I think it sold for like 200 bucks, not 256 So around $200 it sold for uh, pretty quickly. We paid up for it, paid around 50 bucks for it, but it did sell relatively quickly for around $200. Uh, pretty good flip there. Next, we have an Arc'teryx women's jacket. This was a, in really, really good shape. Um, it was kind of cool too. It had like a nice thick uh, fur lining. Not actual fur, but like kind of like a faux fur. Um, I've never really seen this style of Arc'teryx jacket before, but I'm assuming it's relatively popular. Uh, a little bit of an older Arc'teryx label here, um, so it's definitely not a newer item. But it sold very, very quickly for around $80, um, so we were happy to get that. I think we paid like 5 bucks for it, so it didn't even pay up for it, and it sold super quickly. Uh, and it's a women's small, so not a great size either. But it is Polar Tech, which is good, and it is insulated, which is Polar Tech. <laughs> so uh, Arc'teryx, uh, kind of a... Easy brand to miss, but once you find a couple of them, like there, where's the logo? Yeah, this logo here is the logo you're looking for. That's normally what you'll see first before you see anything. If you see that logo, pick it up. Easy to miss, but once you find them, it's like they, you find them all the time. As soon as you find one, you'll find five. So, Arc'teryx is a good brand. This is a uh, Harley Davidson leather jacket. Uh, we only sold this for $70, and the reason for that is it has, where's that? That's 44. Let's see the flaw. I know it has a flaw on it somewhere. Uh, yeah, see this right here? There's a hole right there. Uh, that's pointed out in the description, but that's the reason we sold this uh, for 70. 70 is a pretty good price for something that has a hole as far as flaw-wise. There should be a picture pointing this out, but I'm not seeing it. Um, maybe it accidentally got missed by the VAs. Um, anyway, I'm sure it's in the description. Yeah, see it has two holes on the neck of the jacket, yeah. So it's pointed out. There should be a picture actually pointing it out. I'll be sure to get on them for that. But uh, it was a nice Harley Davidson leather jacket. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a pickup. It's heavy, bulky, but uh, still selling this time of year. So another good thing you can pick up that has a high sale price. Uh, summer stuff, relatively speaking, sells for a little bit less money. Uh, unless it's like a women's top. Sometimes those can be real expensive. But relatively speaking, a little less uh, per item. But uh, they also cost less, generally speaking. So uh, this is a Tommy Bahama Chicago Cubs button-down shirt. Is it silk? I don't believe so. Let's see. Oh, cotton. So if this was silk, it'd probably be double the price. But we sold this for, I think, I want to say 50 bucks. Um, anything Tommy Bahama sports-related is going to be good. And this is happened to be new with tags. That's going to add value as well. Sold relatively quickly for, uh, I want to say, 50 bucks. Next is a pair of New Balance. Uh, these are the M, oh, these are 1540s. So these are, anytime you see a higher number New Balance, it's normally more expensive. So let's see here, I'm trying to find the, yeah, these are 1540 B3s. So that's always going to have uh, more value to it. These sold for, these did sell for 71.25 and they sold pretty quickly. Huge size, 15D. Normally don't buy huge size shoes just because they sit for a while, but these sold rel relatively quickly. We just went over these New Balance sneakers. We're gonna go on over here. Uh, this was a very odd one. It was Iceberg. Um, not, I don't really know a lot about this company. I'm sure if you've been reselling for a while, you know something about this company. Um, it was made in Italy, and it has a big Goofy on it. So I was like, that's kind of weird. Uh, did a uh, Google Lens of it, and found out it was worth a little bit of money. Um, people had it listed for like, 
over 120 bucks. I thought that was ridiculous. So I think I sold this for around 60 bucks. Didn't want to price gouge people. If you get something for a low price, don't try to hold out and squeeze every dime you can get out of it. Sell it quickly. Sell it for a reasonable price. Uh, in my opinion, the customer's happier that way and you have less returns as well. So a little bit of a cool Disney thing we sold. Uh, this is an L.L. Bean jacket. Uh, it's kind of like a barn coat. I believe it's lined. Uh, L.L. Bean barn coats, jackets, anything like that. They seem to perform pretty well for us. Also had the benefit of being a size 2XL. That's Oh, 2XL tall. So that's also, the tall also makes it a lot better. So if you see an L.L. Bean, anything tall, I'll pick it up. This sold for 57 bucks. Uh, next, Burt's Brothers Fitzgerald. Uh, as you can see, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, we pick up a lot of Burt's Brothers uh, blazers, suits, uh, even ties every once in a while. Shoes are good as well. If you find a pair of Burt's Brothers shoes, they're almost always good. Uh, I actually might pull a shoe sale here in the next couple of videos just to show you guys how much they sell for. Uh, this is a uh, Fitzgerald Kaima Cool full canvas. Uh, the Cool. I think I did a video on this. I might have actually did a video on this exact thing, talking about how the breathable fabric is good. Uh, if I didn't, ignore that comment, but I believe I did. So uh, this sold for $57, sold very quickly for that price. Next is another 511 Tactical. We bought a bunch of these things, and they always sell between $40, $50, $60. Bucks. This one sold for, I believe, $50. Now, new Attacks 511 Tactical, we paid like $12 for them. <clears throat> That's one of those padded shirts uh, I've talked about in previous videos. Uh, this is a marmot jacket. I believe this was in a thrift haul video, uh, maybe last week or a week before. Um, obviously sold very quickly for $57. It is a quilted uh, 800 fill goose down, so a really high quality, uh, nice jacket. Not like a real thick coat. 800 fill is pretty thick, but it's not like a, a long coat or anything like that. So goose down coats are still selling if you sell them for a good price. If this would have been a month ago, I would have probably charged 100 bucks for it and taken an $80 offer. But since it's a little later in the season, it took 57 Kind of a cool color, too. Uh, these are Skechers Archfit. Skechers Archfit shoes are always good. I believe these are almost new condition, so great condition on these. They might actually be new. Excellent condition, yeah. So these are almost new, great condition. Uh, men's Skechers Archfit, even women's, uh, is almost always a pickup if you can get it for a good price. Next is an Abercrombie fur line jacket. Uh, anything Abercrombie fur line, this big, thick, fake fur is going to be good. Uh, this sold for, I think I took $50 for this just because kind of late in the season, but this sold for $50 really quickly. Next is a uh, Ralph Lauren pink pony uh, men's tie dye kind of looking polo. Uh, this is actually really cool. It was something that was a, uh, I think we picked it up at a retail store where it was a, uh, the store bought them in bulk and had to alter the tag a little bit. So we sold these as a uh, new with defects because that tag's been altered, but still sold for like 50 bucks pretty quickly. A cool design. Uh, be on the lookout for Pink Pony uh, Ralph Lauren stuff. Uh, next, we have a Viore shirt, uh, new with tags. We actually had this in a video. It sold for uh, $40 in about a day. So you find a new with tags of Viore, even if you have to pay 15 bucks for it, which I think we paid $15 for this, it sold for $40 in a day. So definitely worth it. And it was unpromoted as well. Lululemon ABC pants. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Lululemon men's pants are good. Uh, next, this is a weird picture. This item we've had forever, and I'm assuming because when the VAs put it on, they use this as the main picture. Not quite sure why they chose to do that, but uh, I guess that's how it turned out. But these are a pair of 501s, you know, with tags. These sold for like $50. One of the oldest items in our inventory. I believe this is like a year old. It took a year to sell because of this stupid picture. But it did sell, and it did sell for like 50 bucks, so a decent sale there. Um, that's all I have for this What Sold video. If you guys could uh, <laughs> drop a comment, like, subscribe, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Hey guys, we're going to show you guys some of the shipping that we're doing here. Uh, you just watched the What Sold for the weekend and last week. Now we're going to show you how quick it is to ship. Uh, we're not going to go and break down everything and explain it in detail, but we just want to do a quick video so you guys can see how long it takes us to ship items and you can see how we put out so many items and ship so many items in one weekend. Anything to add?
Hopefully you enjoyed the what sold. Yes. Hopefully we sold good stuff. I don't really remember. Yeah, this is we're, today we're shipping out like 172 items. So um, you'll see how fast you got to go to the ship 172 items and still get 60 listings done. So each speed, speed, speed. Sorry for the tape noise. Yeah, and uh, on these bags, uh, we try to use glass if they, we'd have holes in the bags when we ship them, if we don't double bag them. And uh, we try to use thicker poly mailers, so the ones that we use are pretty thick, and um, they seem to work well for what we need them to do. Uh, no issues so far with holes, so uh, that's why we chose the bags that we use, because they're thicker than the normal poly mailers. But as you can see, yeah, it runs pretty smoothly. Just Print a label, man. Actually, first weigh it. Print a label, double check, make sure the skews are right, make sure the item matches. So we'll check to make sure it says like this is a Nike shirt we're shipping. Make sure it says Nike. Make sure this number matches up. As I can see on my screen, everything matches up. So bam, ready to go, ready to weigh it, ready to ship it. Uh, this one was actually a good example. It's a pair of Greg Norman pants, and the skew was right on it, but the writing on the outside of the bag. Right on the outside of the bag said H, which has nothing to do with Greg Norman. So that was a good example of if I had to open it and check it to see what it was. Took a couple of seconds, but um, got to make sure it was the right item, and it was. So somebody accidentally just put H instead of GN or Greg Norman or whatever they chose. No idea what the heck they were thinking. Yeah. But it's always good to have redu redundancies. Um, we try to make sure we do that because when you're running on multiple platforms, things can get a little confusing if you don't run tight shit. So we try to have redundancies where we don't make mistakes as often. And sometimes we'll double bag. I'll double bag if it's a more expensive item or if, like this one, the, the seal's coming off a little bit, so I might double bag that. It's still cheaper than using the cellophane because the cellophane is more expensive than a poly mailer. But I think a pretty decent amount. So a double bag poly mailer is, I think, a better solution. Um, we've used uh, the cellophane. <laughs> we've used the Ziploc bags. We've used all kinds of different stuff and ended up landing on this. And so far, it's been. It says AE for American Eagle. It's, it's really easy. Solution. Writing on the back, it's really easy to just see what it is and make sure it's right. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. We will probably cut this video. I just want to show a quick example of us shipping. Um, we could do a whole giant hour long video of us shipping all these orders out, but uh, we just want to show you guys a relative um, like the, yeah, like idea this one, of the speed. Yeah, this one sold for $35. So, figured. To double bag it in case something happens. I mean, nothing really ever does happen, but just in case. We have our shipping station um, set up where everything's easily accessible. Um, I can reach a flat rate envelope. I can reach a small poly bag if I need to put something. Uh, if a small item has like a little tear or something, I need, I need to use that. I can grab a small poly bag if I need to use a bigger <laughs> size one. I have a bigger size easily accessible to me over here. Uh, tapes right here. Everything you could possibly need. Hat boxes down here. So we have everything pretty much streamlined to where I take one little turn, bam, I got what I need. One little turn, bam, I got what I need. So we try to make sure that speed is thought of in every uh, process that we do as far as shipping. And we, uh, we, we do use every post office free one they have. We use the Tyvek. We use the, the flat rates if they're applicable. Applicable. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed the, the first couple parts of this video, the what sold and the shipping. I know the shipping was kind of dull, but here we are with the profits. Everybody loves profits. So uh, this is where we're going to talk about what we may actually made in January of 2024. I know a lot of people were asking about that. So here we go. Um, we pull all the reports from the actual platform. So you'll uh, Poshmark and Macari are easier. You just go to the reports, uh, sale, sales reports, I think, are what they're both under, and then you just pull all those numbers. Uh, for eBay, you go to uh, reports, and you click on financial statements. You'll get this sheet here, and uh, we can do this because we put uh, the cost of goods in each one of our SKUs, so it's really easy to pull the cost of goods on the report. Um, if without that, it wouldn't be able to be done. The orders here, uh, this is the total minus the fees. So this is what we sold it for and minus the fees. 
and then uh, the other fees here are the promotions we found out. So very vague, but we figured out it was the promotions. Promotions are five to ten percent. That's what we run at. So a lot of the times it does end up being the nine to ten percent range. So we'll take all of these numbers, come over here, put it in our P and L, and you have the net sales and all that stuff. We don't sell on Facebook anymore. Tony's account is not. I mean, I have it, but we don't use it yet. So uh, we add all of this up. The total just cost of goods, uh, the sales minus the cost of goods for each item ends up being $20,207.28. So that's what we bring home just off of the items themselves and what sells for the month. And these are just stuff we sold for a couple people and we have that on there. Um, so yeah, that's $20,200 for the uh, cost, I mean, the, the profit for the items. We have a couple more expenses that we include. We have the Zoho expense, which is our app that keeps track of everything. It has our uh, virtual assistants on there. It has our poly bags, our tape, our basically everything we use for uh, the business. That goes here on Zoho expense, so that's why that number is there. Uh, then do a self-explanatory warehouse here. So the warehouse is $2,200 a month. Uh, that I know that seems high, but so we purchased the building and uh, the house that comes with the property and we have a 15 year mortgage on it. So the business is paying the mortgage for us. So we will eventually, when we ever decide to uh, sell the property, if we decide to move or something, we want to go to uh, maybe a huge pole barn in somebody's yard or whatever, um, we can... Uh, sell the property and then basically get all this money back so it's more of an investment than an expense obviously we still count it as a business expense but um, we will eventually get all this money back so it is a, more of an investment so after you include all of these other fees it ends up being fifteen thousand one hundred eighty five dollars and eighty eight cents sorry i don't have my glasses on too much of a glare so yeah the uh profit was fifteen thousand that we get the split between Christian and I and yeah that's the January it's a little lower than December and November but that's expected and yeah so that's how we do that and pull all those reports and got the profit so hopefully you guys like the video um, and like subscribe do all that jazz and hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day let's keep selling let's keep growing together so uh, peace